Welcome to The Dream Show. I'm Jane Theresa Anderson and this is episode 265-265. And our guest on the show today, bringing a dream for us to interpret and relate to her life, is Karen. Karen from Detroit in Michigan in the US. Now, I have actually just finished talking with Karen. We've just done the recording and this is me putting the start on. Uh, for the beginning of the show. So I can tell you that you're thoroughly going to enjoy it. You're going to learn lots about dream interpretation and lots about how Karen's dream relates to her life and the decisions that she's making in her life and how our dream interpretation clarifies a lot of that for her and will enable her to go forward with some good decisions and good ideas about what to do next. Uh, For those of you listening to The Dream Show for the first time, most shows we have a guest on the show. Sometimes we do what I call a talkie, which is because some of you tell me that you like the occasional catch up with just some dream interpretation tips and inspiration and motivation. So sometimes we have a show like that. About 75% of the time we have a guest on the show and this is how it works. If you'd like to be a guest on the dream show, you put up your hand by going to my website, which is janetheresa.com. And you go to the menu and on the menu, you'll find podcast, the dream show. And on the drop down box, you'll find be a guest on the dream show. Of course, it's something that you contribute, you volunteer, you offer it. uh, You put your name there and I contact you. And we arrange a day to phone or Zoom actually and record the interpretation as we've just done with Karen. And the thing is, I know nothing about the dream. The, the very thing that I ask you not to do when you're a guest on the show is to tell me anything at all about the dream you're going to bring. So what you hear when you listen to a dream on the dream show is you hear me hearing the dream for the first time in the same way that you're hearing the dream for the first time as a listener. So you get that whole feeling of approaching the dream from scratch, from knowing nothing and taking it through from there. Of course, if you book a consultation with me, I actually do it slightly differently. I ask you to send me the dream about 24 hours beforehand to give me time to look at it and put a lot of work into it before we meet and talk. But I know that the format that we have for the dream show is the one that you all love, that Ooh, what's going to happen next? She hasn't heard this dream before. And that's where we go with Karen, of course. But just before we go there, a reminder of the websites, janetheresa.com, that's Teresa without an H, is where you can actually listen to every episode of the Dream Show that's ever been, that's 265 of them and counting, and people do email me and tell me that they are listening to all of them and getting a lot out of it, so you can do that. JaneTheresa.com is also where you go if you want to read hundreds of blogs about dreams and dreaming that I've written. It's also where you go if you want to find about, out about the books that I've written and the ebooks that I've written. I am a published author of seven books on dreams and dreaming. It's also where you go if you want to book an appointment, a Zoom appointment or an email appointment to, um, to have a dream interpretation or dream analysis with me. So that's JaneTheresa.com. My other website is the learning platform, the Dream Academy, and the address for that is dream-academy-online.com. And you can go there to do one of four different courses. The first course is called How to Interpret Your Dream Step by Step. You go there, there's videos of me, there's charts to download. You do it all in your own time, in your own space, and you can go there to find out about the other courses. I'm not going to use up your listening on the Dream Show to describe those, but if you're interested in learning online about dreams and how to interpret your own dreams and how to work in this field yourself, go to the Dream Academy at dream-academy-online.com. But let's get on to what you're really here for. Let's go to Karen's dream now. Welcome to the Dream Show, Karen. Hi. <laughs> and you're in Detroit, Michigan. Yes. And I think it's towards evening your time at the moment. Yes, it's after eight o'clock here. So, what kind of day have you had so far? Uh, just the typical work day and coming home and trying to figure out what to have for dinner and taking <laughs> a walk with neighbor (laughs) (laughs) so they're in a lovely place now then to be you're fed unwind talk about dreams yes okay so of course i have no idea what dream you're going to bring so off you go share your dream okay uh so it's a little lengthy so I'll, i'll try to get through it but um i dreamt i was at my ex husband's house um there was a lot of commotion um, 
a lady was over there, I know, and I offered to cut my granddaughter's hair. We were outside after that, and a couple of people were there. One of them was a man, and I hugged him, and he hugged me back, and he said he's not doing well, and he was crying. We hugged for a while, and then people took him away. Um, suddenly, I was using a garbage disposal, and I was throwing food out, and the garbage was overflowing. Let me know if I'm going too fast. <laughs> oh, no, it's great. I'm taking notes as you go, and I'm, I'm just in there with you, Karen. <laughs> okay. Um, some food landed behind the garbage can, the garbage disposal, and I thought, this is why they have ants. <laughs> <laughs> then my daughter laid in the baby car seat, my grown daughter. Uh, she needed a break from taking care of her kids. Um, and I'm almost done, but then I was at a long table with a bunch of people. I moved food down to sit with someone I knew, and when I got there, I couldn't find the food. I thought somebody took it and was yelling, where's the food? And then it was right there in front of me all of a sudden, and that's it. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. Right there in front of me all of a sudden, just writing that down. Okay, that's that's lovely, Karen. So as we go into this, I'll obviously ask you more questions for more details. But first of all, um, when did you have the dream? On January 8th. January 8th. And so for people listening to this, we're actually recording this about a couple of weeks later than this, she says, because she can't remember what the date is today. <laughs> the 18th, so 10 days ago. So as we go through this dream, we're looking at what was happening for you to begin with in the day or two before the dream. Yes. Yeah. So it's got some lovely images there. And, and food, food seems to um, predominate the dream a little bit. <laughs> it does. Right. But um, the, the image of the, uh, the hugging the guy and him saying he wasn't doing well and crying seemed to me to be very intense. Was that, was that the biggest, um, sort of strongest emotional part of the dream for you? Yes. Mm. And mm -hmm. it, is he someone that you know in Waking Life, or was he completely a dream character? He's someone I know in Waking Life, but he, is, he has been dead for a long time, and I didn't even know him very well for, for many years. <laughs> okay. So um, how long has he been dead? Oh, gosh, probably 10 years. 10 years. And, and you didn't mm -hmm. really know him very well before that? No, he was married to my ex-husband's mom. Ah, to your ex-husband. So it's, does that make him a kind of ex-stepmother, ex-stepmother, ex-mother-in-law? Ex yeah, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay. So is that how you primarily think of him as being like your ex-mother-in-law or a uh, father-in-law, sorry? Yes. Yeah. So when you think about him, what... What three words would you use to describe his personality or approach to life as you remember it? Um, happy, uh, laid back, gentle. Happy, laid back and gentle. Yeah, the first thing that jumps to my mind was um, when you said he's laid back, is that later on in the dream, your grown daughter lays back in the baby car seat. Oh, yeah, so that kind of jumped out at me. So <laughs> quite often in the telling of a dream or the symbols of the dream, you can get a bit of a repeat, a bit of a recurring motif or a suggestion. And so okay. e even before we go into this, which, of course, we're going to do in great depth, there's sort of a little little yellow post-it note in the sky to me mm -hmm. saying this is something to do with about being laid back or not laid back or needing to be laid back or whatever, but we'll just leave that yellow post-it note in the sky <laughs> and come okay. back to it. <laughs> <laughs> so he was, he was happy, laid back, and gentle. God, he sounds like a lovely person. Mm -hmm. Did he have any um, difficult or challenging sides at all? Uh, he was an alcoholic. Right, okay. And uh, did he, was he a, a managing and coping alcoholic, or, or did he have, was it really hard for him? Apparently it was very hard for him, and this happened after I divorced my ex, so I, mm. I didn't get him in this but apparently it got really bad so the his wife divorced him 
because of his um, inability to deal with his alcoholism. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, so when you knew him, when he was happy, laid back, and gentle, you d just to confirm what you said, you didn't realize that he had an alcoholic problem, or no, I didn't. I think I had heard about it, but I had never seen him in that state. Right. Okay. And in the when you met him in the dream, was any of that in the top of your mind? Was there any feeling that oh, you know, he's dealing with struggling with his alcoholic um, nature, or was that far from your mind in the dream? I can't remember. I think it might have been because he said he wasn't doing well. Mm. And I think there was some, like, sadness and depression, you know, because he wasn't... Yeah. He wasn't doing well, yeah. Yeah. And he was crying. He was crying. He was crying a lot. Mm hmm Yeah. But was that crying in the sense of... Um, despair of not doing well or relief that he was hugging you or did you get any sense of what the kind of energy of the crying was um kind of like a hopelessness like mm. Mm. feeling hopelessness yeah, yeah. A, a beautiful happy laid-back gentle person that has suddenly come to a a, a feeling of hopelessness and is kind of really getting in touch with that feeling of hopelessness in the dream and you are hugging him and did you feel that you were able to reassure him in any way or what, how did you feel about hugging him in the dream, Karen? I, I do because we hugged for a while and mm -hmm. I think it was comforting. You think it was? Comforting. Comforting, sorry, yeah. That's no, great. that's... Yeah. So since it, so we'll just leave him there. We'll dry his tears and leave him there, and we'll come to we'll come back to him later. <laughs> okay. <laughs> At the beginning of the dream, you were at your ex husband's house. Is that the house that you shared with him at the time, or where he lives now, or are they the same thing? Um, no, they're different places, but it was some house I don't know of. So it was like a dream rendition of his house. You mean? Correct. Yeah. So did you get any feeling for it um, in the dream? Was it just, was it such just a sort of house feeling that you didn't really grab it? Or would you able, were you able to sort of describe the architecture or the personality of the house? Um, it seemed kind of big. He lives in a ranch, so it definitely wasn't his house. Mm. Uh, it, it seemed kind of airy and light. And even though there was a lot of commotion, it was a, a big roomy home. Mm. And um, do you get on with your ex? Yes. Oh, good. Oh, lovely. So um, if you think about your ex, what three words would you use to describe his personality now? Um, caring, helpful, and improved. <laughs> improved, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we all guessed you were going to say something like that at the end. <laughs> so um, the dream, the dream opens, and the beginning of a dream often states the kind of situation that the rest of the dream is going to explore. So the beginning of your dream, if we take a long step back from it, we're kind of really saying, well, there's this lovely, big, airy, light sense of roominess and space. Um, and, and there's a sort of sense of caring and helpful and definitely uh, something that's improved. So something in my Karen's life that didn't used to be as good as this, I'm now in a situation where I feel like I'm making improvements and I'm in a situation where I'm feeling um, myself caring and helpful or, or in a caring and helpful environment, maybe supported by those things. But generally, I'm feeling I'm in a bigger space, light, airy and roomy than I've been before. But the first interesting question would be, um, and I'm not going to get you to answer it, but people listening in might be thinking, well, couldn't it couldn't this dream house just be any big, lovely, airy, light, roomy? Why did it have to belong to the ex-husband? And I guess the key there is your dream picture is your ex-husband's home because it may or may not have to do with where um, you are now compared to when you where you were when you were with your ex-husband or going through some of the tougher stuff. In other words, it kind of highlights the improvement. What has changed in my life since those days? Oh, 
Okay. Yeah. So the dream is possibly going on to explore what has changed in my life, Karen's life since those days, because I've done so much work on myself that I'm actually feeling in a big, airy, light and roomy kind of place. Um, mm-hmm. And and where do I go from here? Yes. Yeah. But the first thing you notice is a lot of commotions. <laughs> How did you feel about the commotion in the dream? Uh, a little overwhelmed. Mm. And was it um, like commotion in terms of, uh, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but two examples, it could be like, yeah, everybody's happy and everybody's dancing. There's people all over the place. It's commotion. Or it might be, oh, everybody's moaning and there's got to put food on the table. What kind of commotion? What was the sense or energy of the commotion in the house? It was almost like they were getting ready for a party. And so everybody was doing something different. So there was just a lot of activity. It uh, wasn't anything bad. Yeah. So um, a, a sense of um, over, getting ready for something, lots of activity and feeling overwhelmed by this. So if we then go back to the beginning of your dream, we're saying, I, Karen, I'm in uh, improved and lovely, airy, big light, roomy kind of space in my la- life. Um, I've done a lot of work on myself. I wonder what happens next. Oh, well, actually, I'm wondering what happens next, but I'm currently rather overwhelmed by what's going on now. I mean, I'm ready for getting ready for something, but there's a lot of different activities around me. So there's a sense that either that is happening for you now, that there's a lot of possibilities and a lot of activity and you're not quite sure where to go next and you're feeling overwhelmed, or mm-hmm. that, or, or the, almost the opposite, that that's what you fear, like, oh, my life's actually quite good at the moment, but if I'm thinking about what I do next, is it going to get overwhelming? Is there going to be a lot of activity? Is there going to be a lot of planning along those lines? Which of those would you say it was at the moment for you or at the time of your dream? Probably the first. Yeah. So lots of opportunities on your plate and lots of activities, but feeling rather overwhelmed about stepping out into this wonderful new improved world. Right. Yeah, I love that. That's so lovely. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm sure a lot, a lot of people can relate. You know, we have so many choices these days, don't we? <laughs> Life is a platter of choices, but which to choose? Oh, that kind of maybe that works in with a long table with all the food later, but we'll come to that. Um, the next thing that happens in your dream, you said there's a woman that you know there. So mm-hmm. that's someone that you know in waking life or someone you knew in the dream? Um, I knew in waking life. Yeah. So um, let, let's let's keep going down this three words track because it's quite a good one. What three words would you use to describe her personality? Ooh, um, oh gosh, I don't like her. So I- <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> you're allowed not to like someone, but what <laughs> what three words? See, when you're in your dream space, just before you answer. We're deep down when we all dream. We're down there in our unconscious mind. We're not there in our conscious editing mind and making the best of people. We're right down there with some of our um, non-politically correct uh, feelings about people. And that's good. That's important. That's where we work out our stuff. So it's really important to um, actually give the sort of truthful answer. Don't pretty it up. What three words (laughs) do you think of for her personality? Um, I would say that she is overwhelmed, uh, that she is accusatory, and she is, she doesn't keep her promises. Yeah. Do you think she doesn't keep her promises because she feels overwhelmed or for some other reason that you don't need to go into? I I don't know her well enough. Mm -hmm. Um, It could be a combination of the two. I, I think she can't handle it can't handle it, it yeah she's my she's my uh, granddaughter's other er, my granddaughter's other grandma okay yeah okay yeah so um she's your granddaughter's other grandma. okay just getting this family <laughs> this family people she's she's not the person who was married to the alcoholic no no she's a different grandmother okay um <laughs> So, of course, yeah, same generation. My, 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 um, when I'm doing a dream interpretation, I'm in a completely different area of my brain than, than logic. Um, okay. so working out things like family relationships to people 
um, and dates it's not very easy for me to do so I need I well, need, need the dreamer to help me but that's okay we've got her as the other grandma that's all we need at this okay. stage Karen okay. yeah <laughs> so um in the dream the notes I took you said there was a female I knew but then I think you said you offered to plait your granddaughter's hair or did you say that she offered to plait the granddaughter's hair I I offered to take her hair yep. yeah and did you do it um, I don't remember. I think I just offered, and then suddenly we were outside. Okay, right. So um, what your dream has got there is you're, you're in this lovely, big, light, airy space. There's a commotion. There's so many choices. You're feeling a bit overwhelmed. And the next thing your dreaming mind brings up is a picture of someone who is overwhelmed as well. So we're not saying that you are like um, that person, but we are saying your dream, your dreaming mind kind of went for its filing system and went, what's the most overwhelming kind of p overwhelmed kind of person I could find for a good symbol for being overwhelmed? Oh, how about her, the other grandma? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we're not saying that you're any of those negative things or, you know, accusatory or any of those things, but it's interesting that, um, and I'm sure you keep your promises, but it's interesting that she, it, one of the reasons that she may not keep her promises may be because she's overwhelmed, maybe overcommits, maybe makes too many promises. So your unconscious mind might have been making a connection between some people who are really overwhelmed. They get to such a state that they can't even keep to their promises. Now, that is not you, but your dreaming mind might be sort of drawing your attention to that. What happens? Your dreaming mind is saying, if you get so overwhelmed, what's going to go? Right, yeah, right. because uh, a lot of times she makes the promise to watch my granddaughter to my daughter and then we'll cancel or we'll, you know, something. Yeah, so. yeah. and that, that's really sad. But you know, when we talk about um, not keeping promises, um, when we're in the in the world of dreams and looking at our dreams, we're often talking about ourselves. So a simple example of not keeping promises can be not keeping promises to ourselves. So we may keep our promises to everyone in our life, but not keep our promises to ourselves. You know, whatever that is, um, I made a commitment to, I don't know, save $10 extra every month, or I made a commitment to not eat chocolate, or I made a commitment to do something different this year, or whatever it is, we can break those promises to ourselves for what we think are good reasons, because we simply feel too overwhelmed. Mm, okay. Yeah. So your dreamy mind may just border up. It's like, you know, this is like the ultimate um, idea of what can happen when you feel overwhelmed. And you may be looking at that. However, plaiting a granddaughter's hair is um, is is that an overwhelming thing to do? <laughs> no, but I, I was talking about it a day or two before. And so it must have just gone into my dream somehow but, but I, when you were talking about it before and in, in what kind of sense that it's something that you love doing or something she hasn't had done before or what kind of yeah, sense she, yeah she has never had it done before because she's four years old and um just never had it done and so i'm like we should cut your hair but we haven't done it ah so. lovely okay so simplify it um take away the thought of the plaps in your granddaughter and her hair and she represents here something that she's never had done well let's go and do it mm -hmm. so we're back in that feeling of there's so much in my life there's so many opportunities here there's a lot on my plate i'm feeling a bit overwhelmed i don't know where to start in fact some commitments and promises i make to myself may or may not fall by the wayside because i'm so overwhelmed and yet there's something here that you know i'm kind of offering to plait the hair i'm offering to do something i've never done before why haven't i done this Four-year-old yeah. child should have had her hair plaited. What, why am I so slow in doing this? This is something I want to go and do. Right. That's <laughs> really how I've been feeling lately. You have been Not feeling? either. <laughs> just for just about in, in my career and stuff, trying new things. Yeah, that's brilliant, lovely. So that's probably what that represents, Karen. So and particularly you've identified in your career that trying new things. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> can, you, can you ever remember the first time you plaited your hair or anyone else's hair? Um, my hair was, I was very little because I cried every time I put my hair because it was too long. Uh. So it wasn't a very pleasant experience. <laughs> <laughs> so you associate plaiting with keeping your hair tidier so you don't have to brush it or? So it doesn't get in knots and it doesn't hurt to brush it. 
Yes, yeah. So it's a good a good thing to do. So in the same sense, the plotting your dreamy mind might have come up with the idea of plotting of this is something um, that you haven't done before. Like you said, it's maybe a career thing that you're thinking of doing, and this is something that's actually going to smooth out the knots in my life and keep things easier. I love that. <laughs> Isn't that beautiful? I love it too. And it's not nothing to do with me. That's all your dream. I'm just looking at it. And that's such a beautiful metaphor. I love that idea. So in mm-hmm. your dream, you're considering this idea of oh, feeling overwhelmed. Things could get a bit knotty, could get a bit out of control. But there is something that I've never done before that could make a difference simply by plaiting it, um, making it look beautiful, um, but making it uh, um, uh, more uh, doable, more practical. Yes. Yeah, and that's the, and you're probably thinking of something right now, but I, I won't get you to say what it is exactly until a little bit later, unless you're so overwhelmed that you've just got to go, no, I've got to tell you what this is now. Okay. <laughs> because I just want to get a little bit further, because that's, sure. <laughs> that's when you then went outside and saw your um, ex-father-in-law, wasn't it? Yes. So, as you know, I don't take a dream dictionary approach to dreams, but sometimes I have noticed a lot that when people start a dream indoors and then they go outdoors, when they start inside and they go outside, it often seems to correlate with this is something that I've held deep within me and I'm now ready to sort of bring out into the world or acknowledge or come out of the closet with kind of thing. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> so on that level, there's that sense that I can see two levels there. One is that the thing that you're considering doing may be about coming out of the closet in some kind of way. And the other is that in the dream state, you're being honest with yourself. It's like, well, I haven't really noticed this before, but I'm ready now to sort of move out into the world, make a change, um, or I'm ready to acknowledge to myself that um, it's time to move these inner struggles into the outer world and make some choices. And the first thing that you do when you go out there is meet your crying um, ex-father-in-law. Mm-hmm. So the first thing you do, on some extent to me, Karen, that's like, I, oh, oof, I'm meeting, now I really think about it, now I'm coming out of the closet to myself, I'm kind of realizing that I've got a lot of grief because life's been tough and I haven't been, I've, I feel like I haven't been doing too well. I've probably, you've probably been doing brilliantly, Karen, but there's a sense of, I feel like I haven't been doing well and I really need to sort of cry this out. But I can't do the next things in my life until I, um, cry out the stress of all this overwhelm and everything. Wow. How are we doing so far? Super. <laughs> would you like to make any comments before we, or would you like me just to keep going? Well, it's funny because I uh, have cried quite a bit recently, just doing some healing, it seems like. so. Mm-hmm. That's fantastic. That's great. So I, lo- I love, I mean, I love crying. I love it when people cry. And crying is so such an important release. And it's also when you actually cry or you talk about crying, it, 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 it pinpoints more what the issue actually was. You know, it all comes to the surface, which is really good. And you mm-hmm. see him as, um, looking back through my notes here, you see him as a happy, laid, laid back um, and gentle. But through all this being laid back and gentle and happy, he's, he had to deal with a really difficult, very, very challenging situation with his alcoholism that, 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 that got, got the best of him in later life, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. So um, there's that sense of there's a part of yourself that you may be when you're um, comforting him in the dream and he's crying. I, I get the sense that you're comforting a part of yourself that is also maybe happy made a big effort to be laid back and gentle and yet you're comforting yourself and saying you know you've been through some really tough stuff and that's okay yes yeah so you know you brought you brought him back from the dead (laughs) in your mind's eye in your dream to bring you that kind of feeling and comfort that part of yourself and you haven't had you know issues as big as alcoholism to deal with i'm sure but our dreams go for the big drama to really bring in the sort of big examples of um of how challenging life can be so yeah so congratulations for doing the work and the healing and coming getting to that point thank you yeah it's great now when we all when we all heal and we go through tough stuff 
Um, one of the best things we can do for ourselves, of course, is let go of all the stuff that was holding us back, let go of the stuff we've held on to, basically let go of all that shit, or as your dream has it, let go of all that garbage, put it down the garbage disposal. Ah, okay. <laughs> so, except that it's overflowing, wasn't it, in the dream? Can you describe that a bit more? Yes. Uh, I was I was putting it down the garbage disposal, and um, it was just overflowing. So it, I, I remember some food, like, splattered because there was so much in there, and it landed behind the garbage disposal. I couldn't keep it all down there. Yeah. Uh, so there may be two, there's two takes on this. One is that that is you, um, you know, okay, I'm going to get rid of, let go of all the past, get rid of all the garbage, except that there's, it's overflowing. There's more than I can deal with at the moment. I have to actually maybe process this a bit more. Um, and the other take that I got listening to you speaking there was because you said, now what did you say? I've got to go back in my mind. Was it something like it was too much to deal with? Mm -hmm. yeah so the other take on that might be i've had so much to deal with in my life that i haven't been able to process it all i'm 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 looking back and realizing that i just had so much to deal with and that was part of the overwhelm yes so that lovely dream image in a way says to you um according to where you were at at the time of the dream um, maybe I'm trying to either let go of too much too soon, too quickly. Maybe I need to process it more slowly. Or maybe I have tried in the past to get rid of all this quickly um, and um, I, and not realize I had actually had so much to deal with, not get, gave myself enough time or dealt with all the different things that I have to deal with. And it also kind of reflects back on that sense of overwhelm. Oh, my goodness, there's so much to deal with in my life. How do I make a choice? Mm -hmm. Any idea what kind of food it was that was coming back up? Was it just generalized yucky food or was it like a banana or something? No, um, I, it seems like it was red. I didn't write it down, so I don't really remember, but I, I seem to remember the color red a lot. Like there was, mm. I don't know. So in your mind's eye now, when you picture that kind of red, do you associate it with any particular kind of red food? I tomatoes lovely tomatoes tomatoes in my in my um accent i say tomatoes so everyone listening okay. in they're both the same thing <laughs> <laughs> um, so when you think of tomatoes um is it a food that you like don't like what's your general feelings about tomatoes it depends on how they're a lot of times i like them a lot of times you like them. Yes. And when do you not like them? If if they're stewed or cooked, I'm not really a fan. <laughs> so you prefer the sort of basic raw tomato yes, looking thing? Yes, right out of a yeah. curtain. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just having a think about that. And um, what do you, do you generally eat tomatoes or do you eat tomatoes when you're on a health kick? Or what do you feel tomatoes do for you? I don't know. I never thought about it. No, that's okay. We'll come back to the idea of you don't like them when they're stewed or cooked, but you do like them when they're fresh. Mm -hmm. um, but in the dream, you were actually disposing of some of them. So we may, maybe we maybe we don't spend too long on this bit, Karen. But it could be that you were maybe letting go of the stewed and cooked version, not the not the nice fresh version that you like. So that would kind of fit in with the dream of, you know, I've got to I've got to let go of. Oh yeah, I see. Maybe it's. I love what's fresh and vital and energizing and nourishing. But once something's been in my life for a long time, it's got a bit stewed and overcooked. Why do I <laughs> hang on to it? I need to let it go. Does yeah. That, does that make sense? Mm -hmm. that, it does. Yeah. So you could be looking at some of those things when you're looking at what you're processing and letting go. It, you could almost do the, um, the uh, what's the, the, the house, um, the decluttering guru thing, you know, Look at look at this thing. Does it bring me joy? Yes, no, throw it out. So let it go. Right. <laughs> yeah. Look look at the things in my life. Are they fresh and nourishing? Yes, keep them. Are they a bit stewed and overcooked? No, down the garbage down the garbage disposal. I like it. Yeah, I like it too. So anyway, um, as you beautifully and and logically um, concluded in your dream, this is why they have ants. 
Mm-hmm. So ants do the work of, tell me, what do ants do the work of? Uh, they, they take food away. <laughs> yeah, so then make that a bit more general. Um, they take things away. Yeah, things that we... Don't we, like. Things that we, we don't... don't... Yeah. That we th- need, yep. Yeah, things that we don't like or we don't need, they deal with that and take it away. Um, they also um, keep the place clean in theory, except the place isn't clean, it's full of ants. But <laughs> yeah, they do the <laughs> job of sort of, sort of yeah, you, you've got it, taking away um, what you don't need, what's overflow. So um, we all have, <laughs> we all have um, different areas and instincts within our personalities. And I would say that most of us could, if we thought long and hard enough about it, would say that we have a part of ourself, which is ant-like, which will go out and clear up after ourselves and make things nice and tidy from time to time. Mm-hmm. So, you know, in the, in the dream sense, that could be your dreaming mind reminding you, look, it's okay. Maybe it's been a bit difficult to um, let go of a lot of stuff. Maybe it's been a, maybe there's been a bit too much to process. Um, maybe it's been all been a bit overwhelming. But hey, this is what I've got ants for. This is <laughs> this is why there's a part of me <laughs> that will, in a few days, come back and go. Oh, okay, let's just clear up the little extra messes here. Let's just sort it <laughs> out. It'll get done. <laughs> Oh, that's great. <laughs> and that's where you then see, now the, uh, before I go to your granddaughter, your, your, your daughter and the baby seat, um, I, I guess, I don't know about you, and, and these symbols are about you, but to me, um, ants are also uh, very, very busy. They're always working, and they are very community orientated. They're very altruistic. They work together, don't they, to clean up messes and sort things out. Yes. Um, yeah. So they're kind of they're not busy bees, but they're busy ants, and they're always on the go and marching. And the reason I mention that is because the next thing in your dream is your um, your grown daughter lays back in the baby seat car car seat because she needed a break. Yeah. It's kind of like the opposite to all the ants marching about. I just need this enough of this marching about cleaning up stuff. I just need a break. Yeah. And there's um, often one, there are so many techniques that, you know, that I use when looking at a dream. But one that I find very helpful is looking for opposites in a dream. So one of the opposites that you've got here, Karen, is perhaps um, commotion. You know how everyone was really busy at the beginning of the dream, getting ready for the party, lots of activity, maybe like the ants as well, all that happening. Then on the other side, oh, laid back. Your daughter laying back in the car seat, needing a break, and your ex father in law, who's generally a laid back kind of person, just grabbed my yellow post a note from the sky there. So we've got done two opposites. One is busy, maybe overcommitted, maybe overwhelmed, I don't know, lots of activity. And the other one is the need to be laid back or to take a break from time to time. So that tells us that when you can identify two opposites in a dream, it tells us that at least one of the issues that the dream is processing is where do I, Karen, at the moment in my life, um, find the best uh, way between this tension of I've got to keep going, I've got to do a lot of activity, and this other tension of I really need to be a bit more laid back and take a break, but maybe maybe sometimes I'm too laid back because if I'm too laid back, I don't um, live up to the promises I've made with myself. <laughs> right, right. So it's finding that middle ground where you're active but not too active and laid back but perhaps not too laid back. Okay. How's this sounding? It's sounding very good. Because I do that a lot, um, trying to work full time and see my grandkids, and then try to clean up after they've left and the whole thing. And then I sit back and I'm like, I am exhausted. <laughs> yeah, of course you are. That's yeah. So in 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 many ways, um, you're the ants as well when you're cleaning up after the grandchildren have left. Mm-hmm. This is what they have ants for. Could also be this is what they've got grandparents for. <laughs> Which, which is not true. It's so not true. No. No. <laughs> so, so they could, on that level, be some part of your dreaming mind that's going, yeah, you know, that's what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to clear up after your grandchildren. Or you could, or we could change that 
completely and say this is what they've got um cleaners for you know you bring in the cleaner you bring in someone else to clear up that's not my job we bring in someone else to do that so it's kind of posing yeah. all those questions why are you i'm not asking you this question now but i'm posing saying your dream is posing that question of why after i've worked a full day's work and I have this lovely time with my grandchildren do i then have to clean up all this stuff when really yeah. i've got these other things that i w- would like to do in my life um that's yes quite, yeah it's kind of like it would be really nice to take that plaiting the hair metaphor to that cleaning up the stuff after the grandchildren have left too wouldn't it find a system yeah. where it's not all a complete disaster after they've left which you know i have grandchildren too it totally is but <laughs> <laughs> but is there is there a way where you can plait or make things um to the a silly example that's coming to mind is like you know when they're really really small and so you only bring out a certain number of toys you don't give them access to all of them so you have less right. toys to clear up that could be like plaiting the hair couldn't it yes yeah exactly so you know on a day-to-day basis with whatever age they are now that, that may be a question that you can contemplate from your dream too how how can i plait this situation make it easier on myself either um so that there's less stuff all over the place after they visit or so that I get other people in to help me or whatever it is, or we meet in the park instead of my house. I don't know. I'm just throwing the metaphor back at you there. Sure, sure. Mm. I like But really, this is about, as you identified earlier, more about your career choices and finding, finding the space to know which of the things that you're thinking uh, of doing, finding the space and, and lack of overwhelm to be able to put one or two of those into, into place, isn't it? Yes, definitely. Yeah. So your gr- your grown daughter um, lays back in the baby car seat, and we've kind of got that. But I- I'll just ask you one question: Have you got more than one daughter? No, she's my only daughter. Okay, so I don't have to ask the question. Well, why did your dream pick that daughter and not the other daughter? She's just another busy mum. So we've got her covered. That's good. Um, so then you come to the long table. Like, can you describe the table a bit? Oh, what I wrote was. Um, that it was full of food and you wanted to go and sit with someone halfway down the table. So you tried to move the food down, but um, but it didn't seem to be coming along until all of a sudden it was right in front of you. Can you describe the table a bit more, like how many people were there-ish, what kind of food, what the kind of mood was? Um, I don't remember the food exactly. It was outside and mm. um, for a bunch of people. But I, I don't remember how many. Mm. Was I think a, there was a white tablecloth and I don't know, just regular like birthday party food. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Do you often I, use a white tablecloth, or is that just for parties? Or I, I don't know. Um, I don't use one at home because it just gets dirty. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hands up! Hands up! Anyone that still uses a white tablecloth. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm not really sure where that came. <laughs> so you, in your dream, you had a um, a lovely dinner party going, but it or a birthday party. But unfortunately, when you, we actually look at it with waking eyes, it had a white tablecloth, which was going to mean a lot of work afterwards, because the tablecloth with all those people was undoubtedly going to be dirty. Mm-hmm. So you know, if you were plaiting, <laughs> if you were plaiting the hair, if you were planning that long. A table you probably wouldn't have had a white tablecloth you probably would have had a scrub tabletop or a paper tablecloth or some other yes. solution yeah so the white tablecloth there may be another dream reference to when we sometimes make life harder for ourselves and difficult to control aha uh-huh. mm. did you did you have the sense that oh oh everyone at this house was creating the food and laying at the table or, or had you done it all no um everybody Everybody doing something yeah yeah and when i was moving the food down it was like my own plate of food mm. and i was trying to move it down to go sit with the people i knew mm. but when i got I couldn't find where i had moved it you couldn't find where you had moved it yeah <laughs> some I, p- part of my dreams going this is like that book who moved my cheese but that's another thing <laughs> <laughs> So the people you were going to sit with, you said there were people you knew. So was that because you didn't really know anyone else at the table? Or what was it What was it that made you want to go and sit down there? I think it was because I knew them. Right. And I felt, I don't know who it is. I don't remember. 
um, but I knew I could sit with them and talk to them. You could be able to talk with them. That's great. So in your life at the time of the dream, there was a sense of there's all this food on my plate, <laughs> all this stuff that's going on, all this potential nourishment, all these opportunities. Um, but what I choose to do out of all of this is to be somewhere where I feel comfortable, to be somewhere that I kind of know, um, it's kind mm -hmm. of in comfort zone, and to be somewhere where I can talk and relate. Yes. So they may or may not be um, uh, uh, ideas that you're processing in your dream when you're looking at these career changes. I want to be um, somewhere where I feel comfortable, where I can talk and relate. Um, okay. Yeah, that, that kind of, and be with other people, maybe, that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. But it, first of all, looks like you're not going to get your plate. I, I want that, but how, you know, it's, it's, I've, I've lost touch with what's really going to nurture me. But then all of a sudden, it was right there, right in front of you, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so at the top of your mind, right now, you don't have to be specific if you don't want to, remembering that everyone's listening. But as you're thinking about this at the moment, as one of all of those ideas that you're thinking about career-wise, is there something that you're thinking, do you know, I wondered what was going to nourish me, but, you know, really, it's been right in front of me all along. Um, yes, it's it's a few ideas of me kind of opening up my own business, perhaps, and doing some healing energy work and maybe some dream analysis and a few other things and... I can never quite figure out how to get this business off the ground. <laughs> that I come is... up with the ideas and then I get overwhelmed and I don't do anything. Right. So. That's Yeah, that's perfect. Beautiful ideas. and um, They are perfect ideas for you. Uh, but as you say, it's getting rid of the overwhelm and focusing in on maybe the first steps about what to do. So, you know, there are lots of clues for you in that dream. Uh, one is that it's a big, long table, but you actually want only want to be at one area of it. Oh. Wasn't it? You didn't want to be in any mm -hmm. of the other seats. You just wanted to be there. Right. Yeah. So whether that is um, of the things I quickly wrote down, the energy work, um, dream analysis, and something that I can't read in my handwriting now, um, whether it is <laughs> taking all of those things together um, but bringing them onto a smaller scale, or whether it's taking only one of those things, but it's basically simplifying it or narrowing your focus down to the one area where you are not feeling overwhelmed, where you are feeling comfortable, and where you can talk. So um, as with as with any any starting your own business, you know, <laughs> you can only do it if you do it one step at a time. You don't have your eye on the end goal and then you come back because if you just had your eye on the end goal all the time, you could never take step one because it would just be so overwhelming. So you pick, well, that's really ideally where I would like to be and do. Um, and I'm also allowed to change my mind along the way. I'm allowed to break my promises to myself and if things work out differently, change them for better or for worse, but you have the eye on your goal and then you come back and go, okay, so what's step one? And you just do that step one a little bit like, I just take, of all this food on the table, I just take this one plate of maybe lovely fresh tomatoes to my seat and I take that step first with what I'm comfortable with, where I can talk to people that your dream seems to bring that out too. Um, and, and I start with that. I start by identifying that's what I'd like to do. But your dream is also saying and warning you of overwhelm. So whether whether that is that you have a tendency to take on too much and be overwhelmed or whether it is that you are scared of becoming overwhelmed and therefore you don't take the first few steps. Somewhere along those lines, it's like the key thing that your dreamy mind is saying to you is, <gasps> it's everything's good, but how are we feeling about overwhelm? Okay. And, you know, I also thought it was interesting that I yelled, where's my food? Oh, yes, and you did. I got mad. And then it was right there. Yes. <laughs> Where, where's my business? Which one am I going to focus on? Have I really got all the skills? What, what, what's my life about? What, what's my karma? Where's my dream job? What's my purpose in life? Oh, it's right in front of me. <laughs> oh, wow. That's interesting. Mm. Are you still there, Karen? Yes. Yeah, Can you I, hear me? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. What's, going, what's going on in your mind now? I think that's fascinating because that's exactly what I've been doing. 
I've been going all around and around for a few years now, and I finally came back to, I think it's the same thing that I thought about a long time ago that I strayed from, mm -hmm. which is the feeling and the all this kind of stuff. Great. <laughs> So with with um <laughs> there in front of you all the time and it's the tomatoes not the fresh tom tomatoes not the stewed and cooked version too, <laughs> um so when you think about that now does it give you a feeling of um if you picture yourself doing that, ah, does it give you a feeling of not having all the other food on the table does it give you a feeling of less overwhelm? Yes. Mm. Does it give you a feeling of the steps that you might your first steps that you might take? Um, I still get a little confused about that. Yeah. But um, I'm starting to reach out to people to start at least practicing on them. Great. Do you think yes. that, that might be that part of the dream where you move to the table because there's other people to talk to? So that may also be your dreamy mind looking at that aspect too. Talking yes. to people, practicing, getting things going. And practice is yeah. a great, pl it's great place to start. Getting comfortable, yeah. that's it, exactly, yeah. Getting comfortable is, uh, you know, I, I, I don't know much about business. I mean, my, I run my business, as, if, as you all know, listening in, but I don't know about big business. I don't know about corporate business. I don't know mm -hmm. how much with that you have an enormous goal and you just jump in, but I suspect it's the same as small business. You just take it in small steps. You get comfortable to begin with and um, you try things out, which is what you're doing. So there is... So much more in your dream we could also explore. Um, but is there, is there another area of your dream or a question you'd like to ask before we begin to wrap it up and do some alchemy? Oh, um, let's see. I don't know. You are so thorough that I don't think I have a question left, except I guess I could ask, is there a way that I could vision the dream now to make it end differently to help yes. me. Yeah, absolutely. So this is, for people listening in that aren't aware of this process, this is doing dream alchemy. So um, there are many ways to do dream alchemy, but the, um, the I'm talking to people listening in, many ways to do dream alchemy that basically revolves around either changing the ending of the dream or changing the whole dream or changing a bit of the dream using a visualization or artwork or body work, any, any number of things. So it's basically saying that, all the symbols and all the dramas of your dream come from yourself, from your unconscious mind, where you're, you know, you're, you're, you're sleeping and dreaming to process your recent conscious and unconscious experiences. So all those symbols are your own unique personal um, language for your dream. So the best way to talk to your unconscious mind to reprogram it or to rewire it or to make changes in your life is to use the same language. So instead of going in and doing positive affirmations like, I would do step one of my business today, I would definitely focus on energy work or whatever, whatever, um, we talk instead about maybe a plate of tomatoes or um, plaiting the hair. So we, we're talking to the unconscious mind using its language to get the end results. So there are, that said, Karen, there are so many different ways you can go with this dream. And with dream alchemy, there are, you can definitely do it wrong, which is why I've got the, one of my online courses is on um, how to create dream alchemy. And it goes through the checklist of all the things that you have to cover when you're creating dream alchemy. So you can definitely do it wrong, but there is no one right way. There are lots of right ways. So, you know, okay. we, we could rewrite your whole dream from the beginning. And we could just end with you plaiting the hair because that would be you telling your unconscious mind, I'm actually going to turn everything that's been complicated and overwhelming and out of control into lovely plaits now. Or we could go right to the end of the dream and focus on um, you really feeling good about that, um, eating your plate of tomatoes or whatever it is and talking to oh. those people or lots of other things too. So if I say to you, now that we've um, discussed it, which symbol kind of jumps out at you the most as being most relevant to this? Mm. I would say the hair cutting. Yeah, definitely. And so you, and the, you go also on. also that the man went hugging him, and when he said he's not doing well, and yes. and just hugging for a long time not just one of those short hugs but a long really good hug <laughs> i love that that's really beautiful yeah okay so um 
we, on that basis, just having a think about this myself here, um, Yeah, so we might do, um, rather than change, yeah, rather than change, yeah, we, no, you want to change the end of the dream, so we'll do it that way. So I think what we'll do is we'll imagine yourself at the end of the dream, where you, you, because you were quite happy at the end of the dream when, oh, my plate's right in front of me, weren't you? So we'll, <laughs> we'll go back to that feeling, we're just at the end of the dream, and, oh, my plate's right in front of me, and I've got these lovely people around me. Um, and maybe sitting next to you also is your, um, ex-father-in-law um, but he, but there's a sense in the dream that he's cried all his tears now and he's cried so many tears and he's really happy to sit next to you because he is so in awe of how you comforted him and helped him out so we want him we, we're bringing the plats as well but we want him there to um, show that you have totally integrated that part of yourself that you've let yourself cry out and you've integrated it but we also want him there because the description that you've got of the kind of work you'd like to do with energy healing and dream analysis means that you will be dealing with a lot of people that you will be helping to cry and helping to comfort and helping to integrate and helping to begin afresh. So having okay. him in that circle of people is a really good place to have him. It's like he's cried it out, I've cried it out, I've let go, he's let go, and um, we're taking the best of it forward. And then I think you also have the um your granddaughter on your lap in that circle and this isn't work because this is fun you're cutting and plaiting her hair and you're chatting to the other people about oh this is so feels so good gosh her hair's going to be so much easier to handle like this and look how beautiful it is and you know just one cut at a time one plait at a time to get that feeling of you know you just you just you start the plait in the simplest plait by dividing the hair into three pieces and you cross one over and you cross the other over and it doesn't look like a plait until you've done all those steps and you've got to the end and you put a little uh, rubber band on it or whatever. So a plait is a perfect metaphor too because you don't just go, I'll make a plait and there it is. You actually have to take this little procedure to make it happen. So, okay. ha yeah, so having her there, it's telling your unconscious mind, I want to plait everything that's out of control. I want to make it more beautiful. I want to move it on. You also associated plaits in your own life with something that you had never done so, and, um, before. So we've got this, uh, the, sorry, the, the girl and the, your daughter and the granddaughter in the dream had never had it done. So you're mm -hmm. doing in the dream something you've never done before, but you're doing it in nice, easy plaiting steps. So if you were rewriting the dream, Karen, I would... I would like to kind of like shoot to the end of the dream and rewrite that scene. So everything is beautiful about it. You certainly don't feel overwhelmed. What's the opposite to feeling overwhelmed um, in your mind's eye? Carefree. 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 I love it. Okay. Which is different to laid back. Laid back can be, oh, I can't really be bothered. But carefree is, I, 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 I'm not hampered and overwhelmed by cares. I'm doing it and active in it. So Yes. You rewrite that last scene and you make sure that you feel totally carefree as you do it. And even the guy sitting next to you is feeling carefree because, hey, he's just cried away all his cares. Cool. Yeah. And do that. Rewrite that. Even work it up into a story, Karen, of its own. Of its own and then you're telling yourself that you're ready to take this step. Okay. I really like that. Thank you. It's an absolute pleasure. Thank you for being a wonderful guest on The Dream Show. And, yes. um I know you're going to take those first steps now, and I'm really excited about that. Thank you. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed that one as much as I did. There were some lovely rich symbols to play with there, and we had a lot of fun as we go. Those of you who have been guests on The Dream Show before, or those of you who have booked appointments with me, will also know that in amongst the really serious, and yes, sometimes crying, and sometimes grief letting, and sometimes deep emotional stuff, we also have a lot of lightness and humour, and a lot of laughter in just about every consultation we do. And laughter is a, a great way of, um, of getting to the bottom of a dream, and uh, and just being human and relating. So, and I'm sure that um, there are probably many aspects of uh, Karen's life and dream that many of you related to as well. So I hope that it gave you some inspiration for identifying your own plate of food, which is probably right in front of you now too. <laughs> um, if you'd like to be a guest on The Dream Show, remember go to janetheresa.com, go to the menu and go to the drop-down box at the podcast, The Dream Show, and you just put down your name and your email address and maybe one sentence just introducing yourself and we contact you and set it up. 
And the next episode of The Dream Show, episode 266, is due out on the 23rd of February, 2023. If you're listening to this in real time, it comes out every four weeks. And um, thank you for listening to yet another episode of The Dream Show. Once I forgot to say that, and you've no idea how many people picked me up and said, you forgot to say, because you always say, thank you for listening to yet another episode of The Dream Show. I'm Jane Teresa Anderson. Mm-hmm.